Hi, and welcome to the VR Report. I am your host, David O, oh, and we have our guest, the infamous Reverend Kyle. Reverend Kyle is a VR podcast covering not only the VR community, but also the luminaries and VR developers in this space, and also just an all-around cool dude. So thank you, Reverend Kyle, for joining the show. Well, thanks for having me. Tell me, how did you get into virtual reality? Ah, uh, it's a good story, actually. Yeah. Uh, I was originally doing Android YouTube videos, uh, mm, tutorials, right. custom ROMs, that sort of thing. And it got to the point where the Android community was very saturated. I needed that new next technology. And I'm a big techno geek, so I love that next big thing. And so a friend of mine actually sent me an email and says, have you seen this Oculus Rift thing? And it was like right before the Kickstarter. And I went, wow, that's the next thing. Hmm. That's the next thing. And I had had experiences with virtual reality prior, but I had no idea we were this close to that consumer level. I mean, here we are, uh, mobile device technology giving us the ability to have that future that Hollywood promised us. That's right. And so I just immersed myself in it, pun intended. Yeah. And it, we just... Uh, it, it, building the community and having everybody get together and suddenly it's like, well, where's the podcasts? There were none. Yeah. And I'm having these great conversations with these people, but nobody else is listening to them. So I just hit record and that's how it started. What experiences, if you were to say that this last year, 2015, we're, we're several months away uh, before consumer release of all the major players in technology coming out mm -hmm. with a virtual reality product. This past year, what are your three very favorite experiences in VR? I know that might be tough. Wow. Um, and not best per se, but what you remember. And like, this is something that you, you thought were, what was very important for virtual reality. So when people ask me that kind of question, one of the first things that comes to mind is uh, Rift Max Theater. Uh, we would do karaoke nights. Uh, I had a talk show. Uh, I stood up and did a very bad two minutes of, of just bad, cheesy stand jokes, up. stand yeah. up. It yeah. was terrible. <laughs> and, and then I go down and I do an interview and, you know, and as much as I wanted to, I couldn't be that Conan O'Brien of VR. But it's it, it, six and a half hours in virtual reality. And this was with the development kit one. Yeah. <laughs> and people say to me, how did you do that? Six Without and a half? Off. Right, yeah. right. And, and realistically, I, I felt like after I took it off, there was that moment of, am I still in VR? Am I, am I back in reality? I mm. wasn't sure. Yeah. Because that, that level of immersiveness, even with a DK1, That's right. you know, that, that old school technology, I, it blow, blows my mind to think about that even still now. And you say that when mm -hmm. you're saying, yeah, old school technology, the DK1, <laughs> right? It's it's yeah. not even uh, over a year old, right? Right, right, yeah. And, and, and that's, I almost think time has truncated because everything is so new. Mm -hmm. Working in virtual reality for one year is like 10 years in any other industry. It really is. It's like having, you know, dog years, yeah. you know. So when I say old school, right, I'm talking about things from end of 2013, beginning of 2014, but yeah, it really is, it, it, time has shrunk. I mean, we've, it's, an, it's a very iterative technology and VR is constantly changing. What are your predictions? Right now, this is 2015, what do you think is gonna happen when this actually, this ship actually sets sail and we have all the major competitors in big technology coming out with virtual reality products? My prediction is that you're gonna see children uh, 10 to 15 years old quickly adopt this technology. And I have a feeling that as a result of that, just like that smartphone boom. I mean, I remember the first time I saw an iPhone. It was like 2007. It's not that long ago. That's right. And uh, then... President it, Obama was president before exactly, the Exactly, exactly. So we're going to end up with uh, this, this surge. The youth will take it, and then they'll push it onto their parents, then, you know, uh, generationally, it will it will seep down the line. Uh, you will see everyone with glasses on all the time. Uh, I believe that VR isn't the ultimate solution. I believe that there's this, you know, VR, AR, AR. consolidation. Yeah. So depending on whether you need to either augment your real life or replace it virtually for a small amount of time, it will be something that people will just have with them all the time. You will wake up in the morning and instead of checking your smartphone, put on your VR, mm. whatever. 
yeah, that, that sounds really cool. I mm -hmm. can't wait for that to happen. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things where it's going to really bring peace to mankind and people, it'll democratize education, travel, and kumbaya, mm -hmm. or it could be the detrimental end of society. We're right. never going to leave the house. <laughs> right. You know, AI will get better. Yeah. And uh, But I, I'm really hopeful that that won't happen because people said that with mobile phones. People have yeah. said that with mm -hmm. computers and television. You know, there's, there's a big fear of technology, I think, sometimes. People are afraid of, uh, because it's disruptive. That's right. It, it deviates from what you're used to doing. And so we need to be more acceptant of that type of disruption because it's a positive disruption. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So for Reverend Kyle, you know, what are your next steps? What are your hopes and aspirations? You as a personality, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, what are your future goals in terms of contributing to VR? Because there's, I know there's some side projects that you're working on. Yes. What can you yeah. talk about? Uh, you know, trying my hand at development is something that I feel like I see things that I want to have exist in VR. And instead of going to a developer and saying, you make this for me, I'm just going to make it myself. Uh, you know, the movie production, I believe that there's a lot of value in, you know, the next, who's going to be that next YouTuber, who's going to be that person that comes up with that next level of experience for the children and all of that. Uh, you know, I've got ideas and things that I want to work on and, uh, you know, getting the right hardware and the right setup and iterate iterations, iterations, you know, try it and see what works. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I, I've gotten to the point now where, you know, I've built myself up as a, a personality, uh, but uh, where's that company that like to, uh, you know, pluck me from the basket and put me on the team? <laughs> so uh, that's the next step for me. Okay. You know, uh, living in the Midwest has been a challenge for me mm. because everything happens over here in California and I'm constantly traveling back and forth. So uh, the migration of Reverend Kyle may occur sometime in the future. I hope so. I hope so too. We'll have to hang out more often. Absolutely. Reverend Kyle, thank you so much mm -hmm. uh, for being part of the VR Report. Um, I really enjoyed our conversation and I consider you a friend and I look up to you because I listen to you on the regular. So thank you so much. Thank you. Peace. Thank, thank you. you.